So our program is starting to take shape, but it's still not a game. To be a game, this program needs to be interactive, meaning the things you do while you're playing can change what happens on the screen. We made our cat interactive by teaching it to steer around the screen in the direction we choose. But our mice are still basically robots that will keep moving around the screen forever, not really doing anything different. They're stuck in a loop where they keep doing the same three things, move, switch costumes, and check for walls to bump into over and over and over again. To make the mice interactive, we need them to break out of their loop at some point and do something different. Since this is a game about catching mice, we need to make the mice notice that they've been caught by the cat. In coding, when we want our program to stop doing something repetitive and branch off into a different direction, we need to use something called a conditional statement. That sounds like a complicated term, but really it just means if something happens, do something different. In this case, we want the instructions for the mice to be something like, if I touch the cat, do me getting eaten. There are a few different conditional statements in Scratch, but today we're going to be using this one called if then. You can put any code you want inside this C-shaped block, but Scratch will completely ignore those instructions until something happens to activate it. The thing that activates this code, the condition, is the block that you put in this little hexagonal dent right here. In this example, I've recycled the same sensing block that we used back when we were programming our cat, the one called touching mouse pointer. You can see that when I click the green flag, the cat tells me it's not touching. It will keep doing that until I move my mouse cursor on top of it, and then the message switches to touching. Notice that the if statement is inside of a loop, and that's almost always true of if statements. If I rewrite the program without a forever loop, it stops working. When I click the green flag, Scratch checks once to see if I'm touching, but then the program ends and it just stops checking. Okay, we're back inside our mouse sprite and we're ready to start coding it with an if statement. Let's go over to the orange colored control blocks and grab the fourth item, the if block. Don't get this confused with the bigger block called if else which we're not going to be using today. We need to be checking forever, so let's put our if statement right here inside our main loop, right below the three code blocks that are already there. So every time we come around this loop, we're gonna check and see whether our mouse is going to get eaten. We know that this slot here is where we're gonna be waiting for something to happen, but what are we actually waiting for? How will the mouse know it's time to be eaten? Of course, the mouse will know it's been eaten when it's touching the cat. Let's go over to our light blue sensing blocks and see what we can find. You won't see anything on the screen here that says touching cat. So we're gonna grab this one here that says touching mouse pointer. Notice that this block is a hexagon, just like the slot in our if statement. So we can just pop it right into the slot like this. Check out this little white triangle near the top of the block. It's here to tell us there are more options available if you click. In here, you'll see the cat listed as one of the things you can touch. If we used other sprites in this game, they'd appear here as well. There's also an option here that lets us detect that we've touched the edge of the screen, but we won't be using that today. Let's change this to say cat. So if I'm touching the cat, if that turns out to be true in any given moment, the if statement will activate and do whatever commands we put inside. You can put multiple things inside an if statement, but for now let's find a block that will delete the clone that's being touched. You'll find delete this clone at the very bottom of your control blocks. 
Notice that the bottom of the delete this clone block is flat to let you know you can't attach anything below it. There's no use programming a sprite that doesn't even exist anymore. So this block will delete a clone, but how does it know which clone to delete? When each cloned mouse is created, it gets its own stack of code blocks to follow, and each one will be checking on its own whether it's touching the cat. This is why we can't put the if statement inside the cat, because the code won't know which mouse to delete, and also because the delete this clone won't work on the cat. It's not a clone, so you can't <laughs> delete it. Okay, I'm sure you've all been waiting to see our mice eaten, so let's go ahead and test the game. As you can see, every time I touch a mouse, it just vanishes. Beautiful! So things are going very smoothly, but we've got a couple more things to do here in our game to spice it up a little. First, I'm going to teach you how to keep score and then we're gonna start adding sound effects as well. So stay tuned for that.